Are you in a fearful, avoidant, anxious, preoccupied relationship as one of those either two styles and you feel like the relationship's starting to fall apart? Maybe it started off as fireworks, you got along incredibly well, you really clicked. And then as time went on, you could feel one another pulling each other apart because of differences in terms of what you're looking for, what you're needing, how you're communicating. Even maybe expecting one another to mind read over and over again, and then feeling like one another are not hearing and understanding each other's needs. Well, if this sounds like you, we are going to talk today about five crucial things that you can do in this fearful, avoidant, anxious, preoccupied relationship dynamic to save the relationship. If you're not familiar with attachment styles, I just will say briefly, there are four major attachment styles. The fearful avoidant is the hot and cold style in relationships. The anxious attachment is the one who tends to feel anxious very easily and have a more abandonment wounds and fears. We also have the dismissive avoidant who tends to fear commitment the most and the securely attached style who tends to do very well in long-term relationships. So the fearful avoidant relationship with an AP, there are five crucial things that need to happen to get the relationship back on track in the shortest period of time possible. Number one, both parties have to learn how to communicate their needs. I cannot stress this enough. One of the problems with the FAAP relationship dynamic is that fearful avoidance and anxious preoccupied both have a really strong tendency or sort of like proclivity to fall into codependency and enmeshment. And although there may be something romantic about the idea that I will meet all of your needs. You will meet all of mine. It never actually works that way. That leads to codependency, not interdependency. What we're actually needing from an interdependent point of view is we're needing to be able to first meet our own needs and self-soothe and self-regulate through meeting our own needs. And then we need to be able to meet one another's needs through communication about them. When we get into codependent territory, we usually don't know our own needs, and so we can't communicate about them, which means we're relying on each other's ability to essentially mind read one another's needs in a relationship. And if you have two people who are, first of all, putting that amount of pressure on themselves to guess each other's needs all the time, and secondly, you know, because of that pressure that they each put on themselves, there's going to be a certain expectation that comes with it. In other words, if I'm saying, look, I have to mind read your needs all the time and constantly show up and constantly be there for you perfectly. Well, you better be meeting my needs too then. And so the more we are codependent and the less we are communicating and the less we are meeting our own needs, the more we feel like there's this intensity, this intense expectation around one another to do it perfectly. And that's not possible. It's not possible to always guess each other's needs, no matter how close you are, no matter how connected you are, which means we have to be able to communicate because we are going to be on a one track path to building a lot of relationship resentment. If we rely on mind reading as the strategy to communicate about needs or to essentially get the needs met. So we have to have each side learning to communicate about their needs. And that means they have to know their needs first. Okay. It goes a very, very long way to know your needs and be able to meet your own. So those are our first two things from both sides of the relationship that is invaluable to learn. I will say, by the way, if you have no idea how to do that, or you're not sure how to get started, we do have a ton of content on this channel about that, but you can actually check out for 14 days completely for free. Um, the trial to the personal development school, where we have a really in-depth needs course and communication course. You'll be able to get through both of those within the 14 day period. They're only like an hour each. Um, and it will give you a tremendous amount of context that will change the, the path of your relationships forever. Once you know that your needs are what they are, you understand them, and you also feel comfortable and safe communicating them using really easy tools. It just simplifies the process. Um, so I'll put the link to that down below for 14 days for free. Um, It also gives you access to all of PDS if you want to just scope anything out or join a webinar with me each week. And also, I'm really excited to share with you that we've actually been working on an app for quite some time, and we're going to be launching that as well. So if you want to come in, check out our new app that we have to take all of your PDS courses from and all the new exciting features and benefits in there, um, check it out. That will also be included when you click the link down below. So beyond that, the next big thing that we have to see what another doing is each individual in this relationship has to learn to maintain their sense of self. It's very easy for the fearful avoidant to give up their sense of self in a relationship and think that, you know, it's all about the other person. And of course, it's really easy for the anxious preoccupied to do that. As soon as we see the loss of self, what this inevitably does is it puts so much pressure on the other person. And 
the more we lose our sense of self, the more we feel like everything is magnified if the relationship goes wrong. So if you're the type of person that gets into this like relationship dynamic where you feel like the other person is just the total center of your universe and you see yourself dropping off from things like friendships, family time, um, you know, spending time bettering yourself in your career or learning, you know, mentally, emotionally and growing and challenging yourself in those areas, not taking as good care of your physical health. If you see all these other areas of your life drop off the moment you get into this romantic dynamic, this is going to be something that wreaks havoc later because the more you feel like your sense of self is falling away, the more we naturally try to derive because we have a, a, an ego mind that's like seeking a sense of object permanence. We're seeking a sense of like certainty in our lives. And if you start dropping off from the other areas of your life, and then the major place you're getting certainty is through the relationship. If there's an issue there, it's going to be magnified tenfold. And so small things will become really big things in this relationship dynamic. And a lot of these things can actually reflect that you have this absence from your sense of self. You have this loss of sense of self in this process of connecting. And so if you're seeing that, you have to realize, look, if I'm giving up my sense of self, it's actually going to harm the relationship more than it's going to hurt it. And I have a duty as either a fearful avoidant or anxious preoccupied to do my due diligence to maintain my sense of self while I enter into relationship with my partner. It will only help the relationship if I'm doing that. The next big thing that fearful avoidance and anxious preoccupied absolutely have to do is they have to communicate about their fears. It's very easy for both parties in this relationship to start fearing things and create stories out of it. So, you know, for example, if the FA pulls away, the AP is probably going, oh my gosh, they're about to abandon me. They're, they don't love me anymore. Um, or to fear some of those things. Maybe they're falling out of love with me or their feelings are changing. Whereas the fearful avoidant will often think, oh my gosh, the pattern has changed for my AP partner. And it may not be that the AP pulls away, but it may be that they become more critical or, you know, argumentative more often with the FA. And the FA may say something's going on. You know, maybe I can't trust them any longer. You know, these different wounds will come up. And so whether it's the abandonment wounds or the trust wounds, it's really easy for them to make stories out of what they're perceiving. And we solve for that by doing two major things. And these are our last two things. We have to learn to question the stories and we have to learn to communicate about those fears. So if you can see your AP partner pulling away and say, Hey, um, or sorry, if you're the AP and you see your FA partner pull away and you say, hey, I noticed there's a bit of a shift in the pattern. I noticed you're pulling away lately. I need to know that we're all good. I know that I need to know that everything's okay between us and that you would tell me if something was going on or you needed something. You know, if we can start dialoguing about those things and we can start saying, I feel nervous when, when you pull away because I value this relationship. If we can bring more vulnerability and transparency and communication into these discussions, we are going to see huge breakthroughs. And these will be the proactive measures that you need in order to be able to sustain this relationship dynamic, help it move to the next level, help it evolve further. And that's going to be massive. So there's lots of other pieces we go into in that um, uh, course you have free access to for 14 days, um, where we talk about some of the different reprogramming of core wounds and communicating needs at a high level. Obviously, this is sort of a shorter form video, but hopefully this gives you a great place to start. Please feel free to check out that course totally free for that 14 days. Um, and if you have any other questions for me in here, please let me know. If you want to see more APFA content, please also let me know by hitting the, the thumbs up button. I sort of keep this as a voting system and whatever is voted on the most, I will make more content about or let me know any other questions or types of content you would like to see in the comments. And I'm always going back and looking through those as well. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video today. And um, I look forward to seeing you in future videos if you're a subscriber. Thanks for watching.